Have you ever wondered how to do room generation like you would see in something like Binding of Isaac? Alright, so jumping into it, obviously we're going to need a starting room that we're going to generate from. This will be our spawn room. And in addition to this, we're going to need all of the other rooms that can be spawned. Now for this, I'm just using, I'm just using this one room and, uh, copying it over and over into different scenes. So all my rooms are going to look the same. So they're not necessarily going to have the open doors where they uh, should, especially on the left and right hand side. However, every room is going to contain the same script, the same signals, and the same collisions. The only difference is going to be the size and the shape of your room. Alright, so starting off, I have my room as just a static body. And a sprite, which is showing my room. And as you can see, I've got an opening door down here at the bottom. So I'm going to have my four collision shapes here, or sorry, five in this case, because we have one, one open side that's going to cover all my walls so that my player cannot walk through the walls. And then we have some collision detections that we're going to be using. So I got these set up uh, again as their own static bodies, just bottom, right, top, and left collisions. And each one of them has just a collision shape roughly about where any of my rooms that would be beside it would go and you can see they're not overlapping on the side because the overlapping is what we're going to use to detect if there's already a room in that position so for example if we have a room down here if this is our starting room we have an opening at the bottom we spawn a room down here to match up so we need a room with an open top to match up with our open bottom. We're then not going to go take a look at our room down here and be like, oh, we have an opening at the top. Let's spawn a room on top of it. No, we're going to have our detection here and be like, oh, there's already a room up here. So let's skip that one. Right? That way we're not like trying to uh, double up and overlay rooms on top of each other and get any weird situations. And with these are my detections. I'm going to be using a body entered signal. I'm sorry, we're not going to be using any signals. That was my uh, old, that was the old way of doing things <laughs> that I was doing. Which means I can actually disconnect these. Let's go ahead and dis uh, disconnect. And this one. They're real, because I actually don't need that anymore. I needed that in the old version that I was doing this. But in my updated version, that works a lot better. I don't need that. Alright, so we don't need any signals being sent out from here. So all we need in our rooms. And the same thing is going to be applied to all your other rooms. And not just your starting room. But, you know, your, le your rooms with doors on the left, the right, top, bottom, whatever you're going for. And on this script, we're actually going to have, we're going to export a variable called open doors, and that'd be a pull string array. So this is what's going to change on every one of your rooms. And if we open this up, you can see the size is one, and I just have it written in here, bottom. Now, the reason I have bottom here is because we have an open door on the bottom. So if you had an open door on the top up here, then you would set on top. If you had, say, top and a bottom, then you would have two entries in here. One for top, one for bottom. And how you would do that is you just increase your little arrow here, like so. And you just add top, bottom, left, right, whatever you need for there. And in the case of this starting room, I only have an opening at the bottom. And then my ready function, I'm going to wait for an idle frame. And then I'm going to call the randomize function. Now, I'm calling randomize a lot more than uh, I need to. In fact, I can completely remove those. That was for some testing that I did. 
And I can even remove the randomize here that I have on line 10. So what I'm doing here, uh, after we wait in our ready function, we're going to go into a for loop. So we're going to look for our openings inside of all of our open doors. So for all of our open areas, so again, on our starting room, it's just this one area. But in some rooms, you might have multiple sides that are open. So for each one of those open doors, we're going to randomize. And I'm using this function just to slow it down, the yield, waiting on a timeout for a half second. So I'm only going to spawn a room every half second or so. Obviously, you can completely remove this if you just want to brrr and just, you know, like speed through the room generation for an actual level. Or you can use something like this to slow it down a bit. In this case, again, I'm using 0.5, so we can spawn a room at every half second, so we can get a better idea of what of what is going on. So if I change that down to 0.1, that's going to be a lot quicker. And you can see that when we go ahead and spawn here. Oops, let's come to our full level so we can get a proper visual. You see we're getting some small levels. And... They're being generated a lot quicker. And of course, if you remove that completely, the result that we're going to get is this kind of like instant generation. And look at that big room. Oh, and it's still going. It's still making some generations. So you can see if you remove that timer, everything's going to be a lot faster. And it looks like our generation is actually completed. So that's that's uh, perfect. So this would now be our level or our map that was generated for our player to go through. And if we do that again and take a look, you see we got some completely different and all our generation is going on again instantly. Oh, in this case, this is. And that's still going. That has gone off my screen. Um, So this is a this would be a gigantic map. In this case, whoops. So you can uh, mess around with that, decide on if you should or if you need uh, to have any type of slowdown like that. Of course, that's when you hide all of this behind a loading screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my little timer back in there. Now we don't have these gigantic rooms like that. All right, so for that, we're going to match our openings. So remember, our opening on our starting room is bottom. And we're going to do the same thing on all of these, all these sides here. So if, so if our opening is on the bottom, then we're going to check if our bottom collision is not colliding anything. So if this one right here, our bottom collision, so if, this is not colliding with any anything else, so if there's nothing, no overlapping walls, then there must not be a room there in that position, right? Because you got to remember, if there was, then it would either be like this, overlapping with the wall, or something like this, overlapping with the other collision shapes. Either way, we have some kind of overlapping body going on here like this. So if that's not overlapping, then we must not have a room there, which means we need to have one. So I'm just going to get a random number based on my available rooms that have a, a top opening. So for that, that's just inside of my room control and my variable top. And you can see I can just uh, load up all my scenes here that have a top opening. And then now you can do the same for your bottom openings, your left openings, your right openings, and so on. So I'm just using that total total to get the size. So I can get a random integer based on that. So basically I can randomly select a room out of that list. Then I'm going to create an instance of that room. We're going to add that room to our list or to our point so if we take a look here that's going to be added to our node 2d here so if we were to run that and we were to take a look at remote 
So you see inside Note 2D, we get all these. So we got down floor there, down floor there. Uh, we got another starting room in this case, which obviously if you're doing this for real, you're not going to have multiple things kind of starting. You can have one starting room, and then you're just not going to have that listed. Um, then I've got my test floor here. All right, so once we've instanced that room as a child, we get the size of it based off of the texture from our sprite. So sprite, get texture, and get size. And then we're going to basically set the position, our X and Y position here, based off of the size of that room. So I'm going to set the X completely over. Based off of, and this is obviously going to be different based off where your origin points are, right? So for me, this is based off of my point being right here in the center of my room. Now this might be in your top corner or your bottom corner, wherever you it is for you. For me, this is based off of the center of my room. So I'm going to move it on my X. Over. Uh, and this, of course, off the uh, our room instance. And then I'm going to do the same with the Y. So I'm going to do position at Y, and I'm going to add on my Y size. So I can get it in position so that the basic point of this is to get it in in uh, setting in the correct location without overlapping things. And obviously you're going to run through the same situation here with top, only we're going to be checking for rooms that have an open bottom because we have an open top. And with left, we check for an open right. And with the right, we check for an opening on the left. But that's all we need to do. And now at this point, all you need to do is design your rooms. And if you wanted, uh, you can create a, another script or add another script into your rooms if you wanted to. Uh, randomize maybe from a, a bunch of scenes for floor layouts inside of that room or possible floor layouts in that room or randomize uh, different enemy types that might be spawning in there or randomize different amounts of enemies or whatever it is you want to do inside of that room you can do it so at this point we have our multiple room generation going on here all you gotta do design your rooms all right, now remember to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and if you have any ideas or help that you want to see uh, in the form of video, in a video, uh, maybe there's something that you think uh, many people could benefit from, or maybe you're struggling with some kind of mechanic or technique going on, um, you can go ahead and leave a comment in the video below, and maybe we'll do that next week.